In recognition of the fact I now have over a thousand subscribers, I wanted to thank you all and tell you about some of my history on YouTube. I only ever found out about YouTube in May or June 2006, when I was trying to find a Dragon Ball Z music theme through Google, and that was how I found this site. Later on that year, I joined YouTube in October 2006. At the time, I often made music videos for the fun of it, as I was quite new to the prospect of video making. However, I'm better known for my Trains Thomas videos, alongside my The Rallies of Britain series. But how did I discover Trains Thomas? In June 2007, I tried to find a Thomas episode I hadn't seen on TV. I think it was Salty Secret. And then in the related videos, I saw Trains Thomas videos from users such as Heisler and Trains Fan 65. After seeing that, I thought I wanted to do that too. So. I started to make a soda route. This, my friends, is the very first soda route I started work on, but never finished because the computer was reformatted. But I was able to recover the files from the route because I had copied and pasted all of them over to a flash pen. But I could not initially get the route into the game when I reinstalled it because I didn't make it into a content dispatcher pack since I knew nothing about Content Manager as my game had not been registered online at the time. Which meant I obviously didn't have Thomas content yet either. In early 2008, however, I did find a way to get the route into my game, but by that stage, the soda route you currently know was already in full swing, and my Thomas series had already premiered, so I never did any more work to the route. I got the original route into my game by creating a blank route and simply overriding it with the files from the original soda route. Anyway, it is time to finally show you the route that time had forgotten. MST Noodle truly was legendary. Not only did he contribute to Trace Thomas, he also contributed to Microsoft Train Simulator Thomas. Microsoft Train Simulator users and Train users alike have him to thank for the legacy that began. Sadly, all his creations have passed into legend, as they are no longer available for download, and very few users actually have them anymore. But I will never forget the legacy he started. Thank you. 
So there you have it. The original Sotor Ridge that never appeared in my videos. And of course, what you are looking at now is the beginning of the new Sotor Ridge you know today. The footage is actually from November 2007. Incredibly, this is actually the very first footage I shot and trained. The reason why I even bothered to take this footage is because I wanted to test how well my computer ran with fraps with the game. I also wanted to experiment with movement and timing for the engines. There were lots of mistakes in this video as I was not intending for it to go for public release and it was never to be used in episodes at all. This test footage was actually inspired by my idea of doing part 2 of Super Rescue, the original. Part 2 was actually a trimmed down version of Little Western. When you actually make a train's episode, the most important thing to do is to remember the driver is supposed to be driving the engine. You have to make it look like you're not even there, because the audience don't want it to look like you're playing a game. Even if you decide to pull a hit entertainment and the engine doesn't actually have a driver, you still have to make sure you're not there. The engine still has to drive itself. You are not allowed to be there. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd say that. Anyway, some of the key elements in making a good trains video are the following. Number one, getting rid of the interface. Number two, controlling the train by the keyboard. Number three, good camera angles. Don't be afraid to experiment and learn various things from the game before you actually get around to making an episode. That way, it will be a great help to you. This footage, for instance, though it was not going to be used in any episode, it actually helped a lot when it came to timing the movement of the engines. Once I was satisfied that the game could be run properly with fraps, it was time to make my very first episode. When I was first starting out, I only had a £3 microphone. The future of both of my series depended on the reception of my very first episode. Knowing people liked my first episode, it meant it would only be right to make more episodes. As I cannot thank them enough, it is because of them I am making more episodes to this day. No matter how much you improve since the early days of video making, you owe everything to your earliest work because it is what gets you to where you are. Out of all the introductions I ever made to my series, this one is definitely my favourite. I knew from the very beginning, I would never use Thomas music in my series, because I felt it was used far too often in everything else. So, it was time for a change. Speaking of the music used in my series, for this very fast intro, I was originally planning on using music from a television show called Art Attack. Now, the music I am referring to was actually music I heard when he was drawing a tray. It was like blues styled music, and I thought to myself that would be perfect for an intro, but I could not get my hands on it. So, I settled for the next best thing, music from Railroad Tycoon 2. Still the blues of course, but you know, I was quite pleased either way. My first two episodes did not have background music because I was afraid of it drowning out the narration so it was better to experiment to be on the safe side first. Plus, as you know, Windows Movie Maker can be quite a dodgy application because you can only add one line of sound for each save. So basically you would have no choice but to save the video, then put it back into Windows Movie Maker and then add the music and then save it again. That wasn't the only problem. It refused to save my videos as entire episodes. I had to split each one into smaller videos and then merge them together later on. This version of Super Rescue had to be split into four different parts. Aside from some of the flaws I found with it, it's not an entirely bad application. The videos can still turn out pretty good when you finish them off. And of course, it's a good starting point because it's free. But I'm not really supposed to be reviewing applications, am I? Let's move on. Toby's Megatrain marks the debut of two different things in my series. First of which was background music. Second of all, the debut of Stania Jack's Reskin. He is also known as Cloven State 009. From this episode on, Jack's reskins played an important part in my series. And later on, he inspired me to do some of my own. Not only did MST Noodle make magnificent models, he also made Thomas's branch line. This is the route you are currently looking at. Almost the entire episode was shot on it. The only exception was the harbour scene which I made myself. Exactly. You are lucky, Gordon. A very lucky engine to have a controller who knows how to run railways properly. 
When I got a new microphone for my fourth episode, it allowed me to narrate better than ever. Escape was the very first episode to use facial expressions, as I now have more experience when it came to reskilling, and I thought it was time to try it out. Jack had voiced as flying Scotsman in one of my train's Thomas episodes, and that was one of the inspirations for me to have a cast in the Rallies of Britain series. I will be talking about the Rallies of Britain in the next part. As well as Jack's involvement in the series, the Mama Luigi was involved too. Coach's Thomas was probably well reskinned by him. Sony Vegas was another major improvement in the series, but it didn't actually get introduced till mid-2009, which was quite late in, as it has been quite a while since I've actually made a Trains Thomas episode. That doesn't mean I'm done. I'm still going to make more Trains Thomas episodes. My next one is going to be Gordon Goes Forum V2. Gordon Goes Farm V2 will be my next project. I shall be doing it while I write episode 3 for the Rallies of Britain. These are my 199 and 7101 reskins. It's amazing how Jack's involvement in my series ultimately led me to doing reskins like this. I should also mention that 199's face is based on the wooden Rally 199, and your mama Luigi provided a picture of the face, and I used it as a template. So, in the end, three people, including myself, were involved in my Trains Thomas series. No matter how big or small a contribution, it all goes a long way. So, I want to thank everyone involved in this series. I also want to thank the content creators, especially MST Noodle and Magandi. It's amazing how much things have changed since the early days of Trains Thomas. Soda Island 3D is now the main provider. I would also like to thank my fans and viewers for making all of this possible. Another I really want to thank is Leo Kim Video. You could not ask for a nicer person on this site. He has always been there for us. He never misses an opportunity to give us advice. He has always been most helpful to us. Learn a lot from him, and I definitely have. Thank you so much, Leo. Throughout the entire run of my series, I've made many friends, and I've done voiceovers for some of their projects. It has been a pleasure knowing my friends in this site, and most of them have been a great help to me. Anyway, what you're seeing now is the old September 2008 trailer for my train's Thomas film. I've long since taken the trailer down, as I didn't want to keep promoting something I may or may not be able to do due to time constraints, so for the time being, it's a shelved project. However, the legacy of the trailer lived on, as it showed me the amount of interest people had in my project, and indeed, it did help me to pick some cast members in my latest projects. I would like to resurrect this someday, but I cannot promise anything. Anyway, it is time to discuss the Rallies of Britain in part 2.